Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to BLP TV episode 10. This episode is going to be a little bit different. Instead of talking about anything in particular, talking about something that you've um, asked me to, I want to be able to take this opportunity to tell you guys a little bit about what's been going on inside, um, inside my head for the last um, two and a half years <laughs> anyway. Um, for some of you guys, this is going to make a lot of sense. For everyone who's new to the BLP BLP community, this is going to make absolutely no sense. You've only ever seen me um, with my BLP hat on. But up until six weeks ago, I was wearing um, a fairly big other hat. Up until about six weeks ago, I was working full time as a project manager in um, one of uh, the big universities here in Ireland. And I had been in that job for about three and a half years. And um, about four months ago, I handed in my notice. And I handed in my notice because everything that I'd ever dreamed of coming true in relation to the BLP actually happened. And I never thought that it would have. So I was able to, because of the support that I've received from you guys, actually have the opportunity and a chance to follow my dreams and um, do what I felt like I've always meant to do. Now, here's the really interesting part. Um, my job um, as a pro project manager involved um, working with um, many, many wonderful people, including universities, clinics and hospitals in Uganda and other countries in West and Eastern Africa. Um, for the last three and a half years, or for the three and a half years I was in that job, I was working on issues related to international development, specifically uh, food security, doctoral training, um, economic development, poverty, HIV and AIDS and I cherished every single part of it um, I valued it and the contribution that I felt that I was making to the world and, and to humanity um, and I bet you some of the BLP is starting to make sense now and um, I felt that that was what my calling was and that's where I should be but the last year and a half of my time um, became increasingly, or the last year and a half of the time that I spent in this university became increasingly stressful. And without even realizing it, um, I kind of lost what I felt made up who I was, which was my creativity and my excitement and my enthusiasm and my passion. And I kept on thinking that, um, this was where I was supposed to be and this is what I was supposed to do. Uh, I was doing quite well um, for a million and one different reasons. I was being promoted and promoted and promoted and um, I felt that I should embrace every single promotion with open arms and with gratitude and I didn't want to think badly of the situation that I was in because I felt that would make me feel ungrateful but I didn't realize that, that it was coming at a very, very high cost, and that cost was my mental health. The reason why I'm able to talk about what I talk about with the BLP, in terms of feeling like you're stuck in a rut, in terms of feeling like you've lost yourself, and that you have no purpose, is because I've been there and I've done that. And um, if it wasn't for one very special person, I never would have gotten out of that and had the opportunity to quit my job and follow the old dream. Um, it's finally gotten to a place now where I'm actually able to tell you guys the last six weeks I have been um, hauling ass trying to fill in applications, meet requirements. There wasn't a uh, hoop I didn't have to jump through and it was only today that I found out the news that the BLP is now officially a business. Ah, oh my God. And that every day I wake up, I get to live the life that I I had actually only ever dreamed of. I remember at one of the very very first workshops we did with the Better Life Project over a year ago, I was really struggling trying to come up with terminology around dreams, goals, hopes, and aspirations. And as I led the group through this, what I felt was very tricky language, 
we decided that we weren't going to use the word dream because it sounded too fluffy because it didn't sound real and it didn't sound it just didn't sound real and um, the irony is not lost on me that I have for the last couple of months been telling you guys that you can go follow your dream because I'm sitting here telling you now that I'm living mine so we can use the word dream we can go out there every single day and fight for it for the things that we want and the things that we believe in because I'm living proof that it can actually happen for the year and a half that things became very stressful when I was in work I lost myself and my purpose and um, I never really fully understood that I wasn't reaching or meeting my potential in any way when I was in that job there was so much more that I had to offer the world and I just didn't see it or realize it I had no idea how stifled or suffocating things had become for me because I was so incredibly stuck I was coasting along in life I was completely numb to the experiences and to what was going on around me and I remember one day and there's two memories that I speak a lot about with the BLP and I'm hoping that this is going to provide you, uh, provide you with some context about a year and a half ago so it would have been June in 2013 one of my mom's friends a very close friend that she would have gone to school with her son um, died by suicide, um, I believe he was 18 or 19 years of age and that was around about the time that things were pretty bad in work. James had been very encouraging of me to go back to coaching and to do something with this qualification that I had. I think he had a sense that um, uh, I was missing it and I think he, he, he obviously saw something in me. And he looked at me and he said, Sarah, you've just found out this horrible news. Um, um, but I think it's time that you stop putting your dream on hold. I think it's time that you get back into coaching. Could you only imagine the Better Life Project Centre? And I looked at him and I said, <laughs> talk about saying the right thing at the right time. And I could no longer come, with, come up with any more excuses as to why I shouldn't do what I had been wanting to do with my life. So in about July of 2013, myself and James set up the Better Life Project Facebook page and for the first time in a long time I started to see a lot of light and hope and I realised that with this new passion and this new hobby I could invest a lot of my energy into the BLP and it was because of that that I was able to lift myself out of the rush that I had been in. The BLP was the ladder that enabled me to crawl my way out of it and that is why every single day I am so grateful for the BLP and for you guys for giving that to me because I was in a pretty, pretty rotten, shitty place and it was the BLP that um, got me out of it. There was another day that James looked at me after a very, very stressful time in work and we uh, took a sneaky session um, over lunch to go to the gym and I turned up and I just looked at James and I said, James, I, I can't even work out today. I'm, I'm too anxious, I'm too tired, I'm too exhausted. And for me, for anyone that knows me, knows that when I can't go to the gym, something is wrong because the gym is my safe place, the gym is my haven. And um, he just looked at me and said, Sarah, something has got to change. You've got the Better Life Project, what are you gonna do with it? And a part of me always knew that the BLP was going to be my escape, my exit strategy. Oh, but from that day it started to become real and I knew that I had to do something on it and I had to do something on it really quick. After about six to eight months of humming and hawing of going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, I eventually decided that I needed to hand in my notice but handing in my notice into a place of work that whilst was very stressful, had been very very good to me, was one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. Going into my manager and telling her that I I was going to leave was extremely hard, very, very hard, um, but it was definitely the right thing for me to do. My notice period was for three months and I, I'm really, really proud to say that I gave those three months everything that I have and I left my workplace on a very, very good note. And for anyone out there who's contemplating leaving their workplace, there are two bits of advice that I will give you. Always have a plan. Never just abandon the ship, never abandon the job. 
and fall into nothing. Because leaving your workplace, you leave behind a huge part of yourself. Um, that, that sense of purpose that our work offers us is hugely important to our well-being. Always have something to go into. And number two, leave on a really feckin' good note. <laughs> leave so that they will always want you back. Leave so they will always recommend and write you the best reference letter possible. So I left my workplace about six weeks ago. And I remember when I was walking away at lunchtime on the very last Friday, there wasn't one part of me that felt like I had made a mistake. Every part of my being knew that I had done the right thing. Every ounce of me knew that I was going to make a success of the BLP as long as I continued to work on it, as long as I continued to love what it was that I did. And as long as the BLP would give me a lifestyle that would make waking up to work enjoyable and satisfying and fulfilling. And I'm so happy to say that there's been six weeks and I've probably had one bad day. <laughs> and I reckon that's pretty okay. Um, bad days are gonna happen, but I take them on the chin and um, it does not deter me. So here I am, self-employed, sole trader. The BLP is now officially my baby. The dream is now real. And for anyone who has ever second-guessed themselves, or felt like they can't or they shouldn't, felt like fear is holding them back and the fear of judgment is preventing them from moving forward, fuck it all. Fuck the haters, fuck the people that think that you can't do it, screw the self-limiting beliefs because until you have tried everything, until you have clawed your way outside of that rut, you do not know failure. And we owe it to ourselves, we owe it to our future self to experience everything, to chase the dream because they do happen. Because right now you are watching me as I live mine. Uh, it's still quite surreal. I never thought that this would have actually happened. And I think one of the only reasons that has happened was because of that annoying little man from Revolution Fitness, James Hanley, for always believing that I would be able to do it. Um, so as grateful as I am to the VLP, I'm pretty grateful for him too. Um, and I guess on, on a, one final note, I'm open for business. <laughs> so for anyone out there, uh, for any part of this that resonated with anyone else, shoot me up an email. Um, check out the, the website, although it is under construction at the moment. I am delighted to say that we have finally started designing a new one. Hit me up on the Facebook page or Instagram. Um, Thank you for listening, guys. Thank you for every single thing. Um, I am beyond grateful for it all. Take care.